more than to understand what our tech is about. Um, in farm is shifting food production into the point of consumption. Uh, we are building an urban farming uh, network um, where, um, that allows us to grow crowds. Uh, uh, we grow vertically, uh, we grow without own technology. Um, uh, we have no water waste, uh, we use no chemical pesticides, uh, and we cut completely food miles. Um, uh, to, to penetrate the market faster, um, Infarm has developed um, a, a service approach, uh, service model. Uh, we call it Infarm because of service. Uh, our clients, is a new farm way, okay. Our clients are um, retailers and restaurants. Uh, they subscribe for a monthly capacity. Uh, they, uh, they can choose a multiple of 300 plants per month. Um, and they have a catalog of about 30 crops. Uh, they come in different color, they come in different weights. Uh, and that's it. Once the contract is signed, we deploy our autonomous farming unit, the building blocks of our physical but also digital platform, which is the topic of tonight. Um, so this farming unit, uh, yes, yeah, our autonomous, we're going to talk about that. Uh, I have to spend two words uh, about how we do the work, about our growing trays. Uh, you will see a few things in here. Uh, we optimize space by distributing plants in the growing tray uh, in a Fibonacci series. Um, which is how sunflower seeds are distributed on, uh, on, the, on the flower. Um, we have plants at different stage uh, at the same time in the plot. This is very important. Uh, and plants move during the life cycle in the system. And today I just took a video about this. I'm sorry about the quality. I am not good at this. Yes. This is an operator. Uh, harvesting one of our units, this is an experimental unit in our lab, uh, and then after the harvest, he can move the tray and the plants move on the other side so that uh, as plants grow, the space is being optimized, and then the operator can uh, keep going and plant the new plants. So our system allows us to do continuous growing. Uh, we do weekly harvest, one, two, three times a, a week, uh, but that will come more clear uh, now uh, in, the next, uh, in the next slides. Um, so, I'm not here about this, uh, but about this, uh, I want to tell you how technology enables urban farming and how it supports uh, agriculture. Uh, for us, um, the solution, uh, the problem is, uh, can we produce enough food for everyone and can we do it in a sustainable way? Uh, the solution was to create oral processes with data. Uh, so, we developed our system that has a data pipeline. Uh, what do I mean with that? Um, actually, maybe I should take it. The basic, uh, the source of our data pipeline is, as we call it, the farm rate. Uh, this is our smart map. That's very low, low resolution, apparently. Um, our farm rate provides sensing. We have more than 20 sensors uh, in our system. Of course, provides remote control and remote monitoring. It's an IoT application uh, that also provides full uh, automation in our system. Full automation means weather control, uh, dosing, uh, climate control. Uh, we estimate that we will receive uh, from our IoT kids 60 million of observation per month uh, in the coming, uh, in six months from now. Um, so yes, this is the source of our data pipeline. So what do we do with this data? Uh, uh, that's about our digital platform. So we are growing as a framework. We have internal API that serves services um, for our department. Uh, and we have a whole set of tools that allow us do this for the process for organization, planning, and scheduling. Uh, one of these tools is our internal dashboard, which I'm going to show you now. Our internal dashboard is not showing on the screen. Uh, so yeah, this 
are your units. So for instance, the map um, is a restaurant emitter. The data I'm going to show you is public. There's data that uh, is not, okay. we can't show. Uh, you see this light measurement. This is how we set the recipe uh, for growing up plants. I will, uh, I will show you something about that later. Uh, maybe. Um, and if you go, you can see that uh, we have a lot of sensor data. Uh, so for instance, in the analytics, uh, I can go and explore uh, the last 30 days of, uh, of measurements in the system. Uh, and this allows uh, our plant uh, specialists uh, to uh, extract insights from our system, basically. They, they start seeing patterns, we try to locate them. Uh, uh, so they start to see, uh, for instance, how the plants react to different environments. Uh, they start to see how the plants react to our controller as well. So let's say a look at pH data, this is water acidity. Uh, you can see that most of the time we are within the range, the optimal range. And the arrows are what our IoT from brain, uh, the action that our IoT from brain is doing in order to keep this value in brain. So you see that in this area, there's a tendency of pH to go down, and in this area, there's a tendency of pH to go up. This is information about metabolism of plant. Uh, so this is very valuable information for our plant specimens. Uh, we also have aggregated data. Uh, we serve, uh, we have services uh, for business intelligence. We aggregate KPIs. Uh, we are now focusing uh, massively. I mean, why that's something else? Uh, we are now focusing massively on scheduling and last mile um, optimization. So we solve problems like the traveler salesman problem, uh, with multiple travelers, and, and so on. So uh, there's a lot of application related to data and science. Uh, so an example, for instance, let's see this unit, to show you that this unit has about seven levels, I'm sorry about the resolution, um, and that uh, has Cousteau on the left, this is harvest on Monday, this is a Cousteau, it's a kind of lettuce by the way, and this one is harvest on Thursday. Uh, our operation people, by configuring this, automatically create schedules for nursery, so for seeding plants and for harvesting plants in this distributor network. Uh, at the same time, the routes uh, to reach the farms uh, to uh, optimize our operation times are computed and are operated or driven around the city. Uh, so this should give you a little bit uh, of an idea of how technology can help at least the logistics side of it. Um, so what's next? Um, we are collecting a lot of data. We do create, we do have analytics. Um, we create and get reports. Um, and now we are developing a technology which we will use for data labeling. For people who are not familiar with this, we want to qualify uh, the growth processes in plant uh, for many reasons. First of all, it will tell us if everything is going right, but the real reason is machine learning and supervised learning. Uh, we do aim, by the end of this year, to be able to extract insight from plant growth, uh, not just um, forecast of uh, how things would go or, or just things. We want to extract insights that are at the level. This is how you should apply recipe in order to improve uh, your uh, your growing processes. Where improving growing processes doesn't just mean better products, more tasty products. Uh, it also means that using biofeedbacks, um, uh, we could reduce by 15% the usage of LED lights uh, and obtaining the same results uh, on the on the client side. This is it. Uh, we are actually hiring. We are looking for a Python developer, ethics developer, data scientist. So you are happy to apply and reach out. Uh, reach out for me later. Any questions? Yep. How do you feed the plants for the trip? Swing the mic. What do you feed the plants at the trip? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we use our own uh, nutrients. Uh, if your question is, do you use organic nutrients? There's no such thing as organic nutrients for hydroponic, uh, but we are pushing in that direction. We still use mineral nutrients, but we are developing our own recipes. Uh, yep. So we try to have as this as uh, impact as possible. Uh, nitrates and things that are in the environment. So thanks for the presentation. It's a great source. Um, one question that is quite apparent for me is, um, does it make sense to grow vegetables indoors? Obviously, you eliminate the need for transportation, yep. but you have energy consumption and food consumption. I'm sure you have it enough. That's right. Um, well, our question would be, do we have an alternative to this? But let's not talk about that. Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. 
thirty percent of herbs that are um, and medicines that are sold in Germany are imported. They come from Israel, they come from Spain, uh, and so on. And when you compare food miles um, against, and this is controversial, I must admit, uh, against um, uh, producing with electricity but on site, then yes, we have the same level. Uh, at the same time, we do serve much better quality. Our plants, when you buy them, they are alive. Uh, they are not just alive. They are in the same place where they grew. They are much more tasty than anything else you can buy in an editor store. Uh, by the way, we have just having that job. We are going to roll out 180 of our units uh, in 2017 uh, in Berlin. But some of them you can already see in editor stores. Okay. So, about measuring taste of the products. I am thinking about measuring all the time. Uh, yes, we have got about measuring taste. We will use humans to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then we will actually, we'll actually submit data to our platforms. Uh, it's very relevant for us. Taste. Uh, taste is a measurement of the quality of the plants, definitely. Uh, aroma is another one. Uh, the texture is another one. So yes, we have thought about that. There's no way to do it except using human at the moment. OK, uh, this would be my follow-up question. Uh, we saw you collect a lot of environmental data, but you do not collect any data on the plants. Do you have any plans for the future to uh, like document the process of uh, yeah. deciding whether the plant uh, is good, tastes good, uh, good shape, development, whatever? Yeah, um, yes. Uh, so we are pushing in multiple directions. First of all, pollen means a lot of yields. Good taste and nutrients. This is very hard to do in a high drug good way, so it is possible. We can see the outcome of our burn process. If I cannot do it high drug good, means I cannot use machine learning for the management. So I'm still focusing on the big tech stuff. Uh, yes, uh, we develop technology that can tell us, for instance, what is the color of the lettuce? Because we can make them green or we can make them red. Uh, and this uh, can allow us to optimize recipes. Uh, we can understand if the lettuce is open or is closed, uh, what is the surface um, of the lettuce. Uh, we also refer things uh, that are related to plant metabolism, so which means that somehow I can understand whether the plant is optimized uh, there in its growth. Uh, but yes, we, we don't get yet into nutrient analysis in the high drug much. This is very hard and challenging. We do, however, use technology to do that. I mean, one of the slides I was showing, uh, it was a, uh, so this is SIO, or I don't know how to pronounce it, S C I O is a, is a device that is used to measure nutrients, it does some sort of multispectral analysis over food, and it's becoming very popular. So we do use this to understand whether we can have a question with the content. Uh, we are investigating this. That's question. What do you think about technology like um, farm plot? I see where you use the fiddle plot. How does it compare? Technology like? Farm plot. Like farm plot? Um, I mean, and the farm plot is actually very interesting. Uh, it's very, I come from robotics, so for me, I love farm plots. <laughs> uh, I mean, technology has to serve a purpose to be interesting to me, honestly. Farm plots do serve a purpose. Uh, maybe uh, people are focusing on enabling people to become farmers, and that would definitely help them. I don't think farm plots actually increases, uh, optimizes, uh, or increases the density of the produce or, or things like that. So I don't think it's actually something that's wrong. Thank you so much for your time.